Welcome back to the Profit Playbook Podcast. This is our third episode, and we're glad that you're with us. Uh, here with my co-host, uh, Mr. Beard, Bearded Picker, Scott, and uh, talk about dedication. Uh, he was on another road trip today to get more merchandise, and uh, we, uh, we're we filming this Thursday night, and for him, it's like after 9 o'clock, right? Getting kind of late, and uh, he's dedicated to not only, you know, do what he has to do, but to get back in and uh, record this podcast. So, so thanks for being here with us today. Is is it too early to say that's why we say flipping ain't easy? Is that too early in the, in the show? It's never, it's never too early to say that. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> reach arbitrage is not for the weak at heart. And you've the one thing I can tell you about Amazon is I've, I've heard it since I started on Amazon. You got to feed the beast. You've got to have merchandise available because it sells so fast, and it's out there and yeah, I've, I've been slack with doing retail arbitrage, so I'm just kind of getting back into it. I'm going out again tomorrow, I think, if I feel like it. Man, I, I was a lot of, 14 hours in the car is a lot. So well, you're used to that. You, you used to do this like multi states at uh, days and maybe weeks at a time, right? Yeah, the longest I was out was uh, 32 days. I had done that twice in 41 states since I started this. Wow. And are you going to, are you planning on ramping it up to that level or just maybe doing what you've been doing? Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm not going to go a week at a time. I'm, I'm probably going to go two days. Yeah. It's, you know, anywhere. So my whole, my whole mantra has, was, has been lately last few years since I came off the road was just own the three hours around you. But now it's going to be, I'm going to double that. So basically it's drive the three hours and then I'm going to make another circle of three hours and that'll, I'll spend one day. So I'll be gone two days. So just spend one night and come back. So I know last time you went, uh, you're telling me you stayed overnight, you came back and you had like 300 items, right? That's pretty good for Correct. RA retail arbitrage uh, with Amazon. So what did you get today? Uh, 60 probably somewhere in there. So what so what is what are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to get like 10 per hour, 20 per hour? Uh, is there uh, are there trips where you just strike out? What is that like? Man, I struck out. I struck out the first door and the last door. <laughs> okay. uh, there are stores that I go in that you just there's just, you know, I've got a list in my head right now. I'm operating on about 25. Depending on what kind of store it is, there's three different kind of stores. I was on this trip and usually and then I scan 10. I look for the, the items and then I, I'll scan 10 more items. So I, I did find three or four that I'd never seen before. And that's another one is, is once you've been in these stores so many times and different stores, you recognize patterns. And that is most people don't, they don't follow through enough to and put themselves in the, in the stores over and over to, to recognize. I mean, let's be for real. You know these major retailers, especially if you're doing a Walgreens uh, or a Walmart, all the, their shelves are they look they're identical, and so you, if something is there, it looks different, right? Uh, and so it stands out pretty well. So you have a predetermined list of what you're looking for, um, right? Before you get into the store, so you're not, you know, I think that was for someone like me that's going to be getting into this very very soon, and I've made some attempts, some feeble attempts to really get myself into RA. And I find that I'm scanning, 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 scanning. I'm like, you know, and it feels like I'm scanning and wasting my time because I come, keep coming across stuff that's not going to be even worth messing with. And I guess kind of what you do, you, you have a list and then you, you go and scan like 10 items that you haven't seen before, right? Kind right. Of learn. Also study before I go. And so, I don't know how much I've talked about this. It's, I mean, it's just, to me, it's just common sense. So if I'm on a listing of discontinued items and there's four other sellers, I want to know what they're selling because chances are, if they're selling the same item, I have, they've, they've sourced similar places. And so that's a, you, you can expect, you can, you, it's, it's almost like a cheat code. You start seeing what, you know, what items other people are selling who sell the same kind of things you do. Uh, you can also social media. There's a lot of people on social media that like to brag. Look what I found. Look what I found. All right. Well, then you you better have covered your area because 
<laughs> but I, I think that's so important, you know, and I talk about this a lot on eBay. Uh, I think a lot of sellers, they sell, they're in their own bubble, right? And it's almost like they're oblivious to the fact that in many instances, they are dealing with competition, but yet they sell this item, they list the item, they price it, maybe they'll look at sold comps, but they'll have no idea what their competition for that sale is, right? Or their competition will sell the item when they're trying to sell it and they're wondering why they can't sell it. And they have no idea that maybe their competition is doing something differently with the listing. And uh, I think it's just so important. And, and that's just an example right there where you're not trying to sell on Amazon in a bubble. You're, you're yeah. trying to find similar sellers and trying to emulate what they're doing. That makes total sense. And so, and here's the other superpower, you know, and, you know, the, the listener, if you watch the, the, my show for a while, I, I'll tell you these things over and over, but is a group of friends around you, people that do what you do, that know what you do. So I've got a great friend. Uh, she's in a different state. Uh, it's, I guess, 2016, I get a message. She's like, and she's like, I don't really reach out to many people, but I'll watch your videos and I know where you source because I source the same place. And we started talking. We have been we have been fast friends since then, and I, I talk to her about every day. Uh, we're really really good friends. Uh, we've been on vacation, have families together. Uh, uh, Joni absolutely loves her, and so like she was sourcing today, I was sourcing today, and so it's a little friendly competition. Who's finding more? Who's finding different? But also because I took a couple years off, and she never did. You know, it's a great resource to go, man, I found this picture and I sent her one because I looked it up and it had on eBay and it was a, it was an item that was $7 selling for 48 or 49 and I get an immediate response. Those are expired. <laughs> and, and, you know, I started finding, I started looking for the expiration date and if you've got a, something that's got a tube, the tube, the tube kind, sometimes it's imprinted on the very end and the crank. They expired in 09 of 20. <laughs> oh. Uh, so, and she's like, I got those taken down. So I knew they were expired. And so that saved me, you know, that would, I don't know, $12, $15. But it's, you know, it's it's good to have people. You I don't cross her area. She lives 10 hours from me. So we don't, we don't cross. Even if there's one state we do in common, but. I go to one end of it. She goes to the other. We don't get, we don't get close. And there's so much to go around folks. You can't, you can't buy it all. You can't find it all. There's so, there's so many local, uh, and so many people think, Oh my God, that people are going to drop the price. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's economics. If you don't like it, wait, wait just a minute. I mean, these things that I buy are discontinued. They sell very fast. And so the price will change. You know, if more people come on to it, the price is naturally going to come down because the supply is up. So you're, you're mainly you're mainly, though, going in looking for stuff that'll fit well on Amazon. Right. But right. you will then at times push some of those over to eBay. I don't know if you do a Macari. Maybe you do. Maybe you said you have or not. I've but got a goal. Of, I've got three products. I got to get listed on Macari and uh, and Bonanza this weekend. Uh, she's got the same ones. And so we're challenging each other. So who's going to get them on there first, but the, the, you can't, you can't neglect either pat either platform because the beautiful thing about eBay is they don't have the same price restrictions that Amazon does. So I've got products that, that, you know, that are worth 40, $50 each. And Amazon says you can only sell this for $25. So I put it on eBay. Yeah, then. They'll, they'll restrict you. The, what do they think your price gouging? Yes, they, uh, and if I, wow. I challenge anyone in the, in the comments. Come, you can come at me all you want to. There's no such thing as price gouging. Okay, I'll give you one caveat. Okay, if it's a hur if it's a hurricane or a weather or an emergency, and you're and you're charging extra, that's despicable. But any right. other time, any other time, it's the free market. It's well, I sell an item that you can't get anymore that people still want. It is rare. It makes it. It's the same thing as, as you have this little glass figurine, uh, what's it, uranium glass, and you go, oh my God, look, it's got uranium. It it's it, it's worth this right. because it's rare. 
Well, the same thing with a commodity is it's rare because you can't get it anymore. Same, same. So the price is up because of the demand is up, supply is down, price goes up. You know, it's funny. I and I, this is not a secret because you you've shared this on your channel, um, but I'm not going to tell what you're selling. But I can tell you, it's like you show us. Yeah, I bought this for five bucks, <laughs> and it's going for seventy dollars. It's like wow. And there's demand for it. It's not like you're you're you know pricing these things and they're just sitting there waiting for the unicorn buyer to come along and grab it. These things have demand at that price point. It's amazing. Yeah, I bought two things last Thursday. I bought there were ten of them in the store, a uh, store I'd never been in in the middle of nowhere. My, my roommate was actually from that town in college, and I sold two today. The first two today. They were six dollars and forty nine cent. I got one hundred and fifty four dollars each for them so far. So I've sold two out of the ten. Okay, that's awesome. The first I mean, one paid for everything. The first they were seventy dollars with tax and everything. The very first one paid for and made profit. The second one's pure profit. So you buy these things, right? And then you take them to your car and you just you list them, right? You get them listed before you even leave. Yeah, I think back. a lot a lot of viewers from from uh, from the earlier episodes of, of this guy you know, or eBay only, and they don't understand how the, the ease with which Amazon. So See. you're a list, you're putting on a, an existing listing. Your only difference is price. That's why repricers are so popular because it, the way you sell, distinguish yourself on a listing on, on Amazon is by price. And yeah, so you don't need a picture. So you can, those, I brought those 10 out to the parking lot after I was finished doing jumping jacks and doing all the fun stuff that I just found, you know, $1,500 worth of stuff in the middle of nowhere. Um, I, I immediately uh, scanned a barcode, listed them, and then I was on the way to the next door. That's awesome. That and so cool. when you get home, you can – so I didn't do it today, but the majority of the time I try to get – especially if I've already had – and the nice thing about Amazon too is once you, if you've listed something and I bought a bunch of stuff that I already had, you can go into your inventory and just change the number, and, and, uh, and it immediately updates. Um, so you've got the same SKU numbers, the same everything. And so if your repricer is set up, your repricer just carries on like you never ran out. And it's uh, it's a beautiful thing. If to, Their app is a little more powerful than eBay's. So so when you say a repricer, it's a third-party tool that you connect to your Amazon account. And you, you, what do you put a threshold? Like, uh, you know, um, price it right. from this amount, no lower than this. So you right. So it, it has it has it, it works on algorithms, the algorithm to defeat the algorithm. Is, <laughs> and uh, so it, you tell it uh, they have different ones. I have one that I set the minimum high and low and it, it'll play in the middle and bite for the buy box. I have another one that I, I just have the percentage profit, minimum percentage profit. So when I put the cost in there, it'll set the high and low for you. And so that's an easy. So you don't have to put one number in to get it started. You just pick the strategy. Um, I think I've got five strategies I use. Um, I've got one that's essentially like a clearance strategy. It fights for the absolute lowest price, no matter what. And that's something that's been sitting around for a while because it's easy just to go into that com program and switch it from buy box search to lowest. And that, it's got an AI. I use Aura. Uh, I'm an affiliate with Aura, A U R A. Um, and okay. Bearded Picker will get you a discount if you want it. But, but do you have an yeah. affiliate link? Yes, it's in all my videos. Uh, the code's beard I'll, picker. I'll drop it in the uh, description down below so that but, you guys can check it out. But it's got an AI function too, which supposedly recognizes when it's going against another R customer and will not reprice you against another R. There's some interesting things that they're working on with it. But but what yeah, it, it's, a, it's essentially a computer program that just changes the price, and it it it'll change the price, you know, every second. So it it it. Every time that fee comes through from Amazon, as much as they fast as they can get it, uh, it'll change the price for you. So that's why that's why if you've got more than 20 or 30 items, you got to have a repricer because you could go in a, as another Amazon seller and go, man, I'm going to spend the next hour moving all 30 of my prices. I'm going to analyze it. And by the time you can get done, if I'm on your list, my repricer is already reacted and all your work is for nothing. <laughs> right. And so it's good to have that tool doing it for you. And what does that usually run a month? I think that I think R is ninety nine dollars a month, ninety seven. Uh, there are some that are cheaper. There's about a hundred bucks a month. Okay. Yeah, I think the cheapest one's about twenty five a month. 
but the one thing I challenge you with is even if you don't use R, even if you use one of the cheaper ones, uh, I think there's it's like pour. I tell everybody it's like pouring gasoline on a fire. You can't imagine Amazon sales are already crazy, but it's when you're all of a sudden fighting for the, and in the buy box or more and or you're the lowest price more, you'll be absolutely amazed how many items you sold to the. How many items do you think you would need in your Amazon store to make it worth a repricer like that? Spending a hundred bucks a month on a repricer. Uh, I, it probably depends on what your profit by. I mean, cause everybody it's hard to, you know, if, if you're a wholesaler, it's your, your profit margin is a little, so you need, you need more, but if you're buying stuff like me, you know, I've got items that'll cover a hundred dollars with one shot. Yeah. Well, I am fortunate. I am fortunate. I'm grandfathered in at the 57, so I only pay 57. Uh -huh. But that was, that was, that's been like that for over a year. But it's it's worth trying one of the other ones just to get a feel for it to see, to see how you, some of the cheaper ones will take it down to the bottom a little faster. But but it's, but if you're if you're happy with what the bottom number is, you know you have complete control to say, hey, don't sell this any less than 22 dollars. And even mm -hmm. if it goes to 22 dollars, you'll know exactly what you make. And so it, it, it won't go below uh, any of the reprices are all, they're all, they're all very similar in the way they work. Um, well, I, I can tell you, uh, I was going to ask you, you are one that likes technology, right? You like gadgets. You like me, you like gadgets, right? Correct. Um, have you heard of something called remarkable? I have not. Okay. This thing is cool. So I was at ASD this week. Um, with some friends out there that also were there for business, trying to uh, buy some merchandise. And uh, he had this, looked like a tab, looked like, a, I thought it was a writing tablet at first. Okay, this is kind of the way it looked. And I'm like, looking at it closer, I'm like, wait, that's digital. And it looked like, a, it had the lines and everything. And I was watching him use this. He was showing me this device. It has like a little pin, like stylus. And it's almost like a, an iPad with an uh, Apple Pencil kind of thing. But... It's so cool. You can write in there and then it learns your writing. So if you wanted to make a list, maybe you have a list of things you're doing at RA, right? And you have this thing and right. you're going down a list of things. You could actually uh, highlight it, like draw a line with your, your hand around the, the text and it'll put it in, in uh, like a, like a, whatever font you want, like in word format, send it to your computer, uh, like clean. Um, you can, draw a diagram and zoom in and they have, so they have like their warehouse all mapped out and where everything is within their warehouse and they can just zoom in and they can send it over by email. It's such a cool device called remarkable. And it's like 500, 600 bucks. But um, you know, if you're out and about and you're maybe taking notes, right? You're jotting notes down and you deal with paper. Cause I got, I got paper notes all over the damn place, even here. And then, um, you know, I go somewhere and I forget that, oh crap, I forgot my note that I needed to, you know, do whatever with. And so a device like this, I can see just being really handy and it's a lot more, uh, you know, there's a lot more features involved than just using your iPad with an Apple pencil kind of thing. So I try to take notes on the notes app on the phone and just speak into it. Mm -hmm. Uh, hopefully the new phone, the new Siri coming out, that that's one of the big things they're talking about with the new iOS 16, uh, I, iPhone 16, iOS 8. Because Siri does not understand Southern, and so I get the craziest messages. <laughs> and, but it's because I like the fact that it it puts it on the computer. I have I have a MacBook and an iMac, so yeah, it'll be, it'll be on the phone. It'll be everywhere. But that's a that's probably but a similar like, technology. It just recognizes. You, you say something, it puts the wrong word, you know, Siri does. So like you're writing and it feels like you're writing with a pen. And okay. then, uh, then you flip it upside down and then you just like do this if you make a mistake and it wipes out that spot that, that you're, like you have an eraser. It's, it I is bet, just, I bet it's Android based because the Samsung phones will, you can write notes with the, with the pen and uh, yeah. it'll, it'll make them from your handwriting into a like regular font. I yeah. bet. I bet it's got some of that technology. Yeah. You know, I'm not, a, I'm, they don't sponsor this channel, but you know, um, I'm a fool for gadgets. I will buy gadgets if I believe there's some use for it 
And I would rather carry this thing around. It closes like a little notebook. You know, you have a little place for your pen. And, you know, for me, that's perfect. You know, go uh, from store to store, have a pre-uploaded uh, list, or, you know, maybe I'm going to add to it, right? And then I keep that as a file, and it saves all this information. It's pretty pretty slick. And uh, I know there's a lot of folks out there who, who would prefer to handwrite or you write out whatever notes that they're taking for their business. And this kind of merges that with technology. It's it's and they have Wi-Fi. It's really good. So something to check. It's called Remarkable. So uh, I don't want everyone to go out and buy it before I do. I'm planning on picking it up here pretty soon because I want to have a tool like that to where you know I'm not lugging around my iPad, my my iPhone. You know the notes are okay, but I I do keep notes on the Note tab on I, iPhone, but it's it's not ideal. It's not where I want it to be. And I don't trust Siri to save my life. So um, something like that is, uh, it's perfect. And th this guy is, uh, he is my good friend's son. So he's uh, Gen Z and he's, you know, excited about it. You know, he's into technology. So uh, there's a lot more than what I've talked about. I'm sure there's people that are watching this that probably have it or tried it. Uh, but, you know, tools like that, that can help you, um, get an edge in your business. Cause I, I gotta tell you, if I get one of these things, it's going to have, you, you could send me an email saying, Hey, I look this kind of stuff up. I can then, um, enter, uh, pull that into my list kind of thing. If I, you know, if you ever were kind enough to share your, uh, your wins with me, but, um, I took you a picture of the shelves over there. Was that? Oh yeah, you did. You, you did. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in and zoom and, uh, you know, I'm going to, you know, use that as a, because uh, there's going to be times I'm going to find these kind of things. You're going to be out of stock, right? Because you can't find it anymore. And just because we're in different parts of the country, I doubt you're going to drive all the way out to Las Vegas to, to do any sourcing anytime soon. Maybe in October though, right? Uh, Maybe. Maybe. I don't even know if they're doing a thing in October. They're not doing it. They said they were doing it this year. Okay. okay. So, um, the one thing with tools, though, I would tell you, though, is, is take tools down to basics. Um, one of the best things I've done lately for the business is as I've got back in the RA, though, and these things are selling very quick on Amazon, I don't want to go to the building and make a list because I was making a list on the phone and then going over there and pulling stuff. Right. And I, when I've got I've got eight foot tall by eight foot wide shelves sitting right here and they're two foot deep. Mm -hmm. And so I started putting them over here. I put all my RA stuff right here. And you'd be amazed. And so the next iteration is those boxes came in today while I was gone. The a lot of the items I've got, I bought specific boxes for that. Can't imagine the efficiency. You know, some sometimes efficiency is more important than, you know, hey, I can find a box or I can make a box. I was using free boxes from UPS, but I was having to shove all kinds of air pillows and 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 fill in them. And so it was making them heavy. Folks, don't miss the fact that the right size box can save you so much money. Yes. Because there's that's a 10 4 4 box versus the 12 10 3 I was using. You know how much less feel that and how much lighter that box is? Right. And, Especially if it's not something that, you know, you're not shipping glass where you really want to make sure you have, you know, padding on all sides or surrounding it and not, you know, any interaction with the box at all. No, but there, I've got bubble, <clears throat> excuse me, a bubble wrap and stuff over there that I put in it. I'm not, I'm not wanting to not use fill. I just want to use a lot less of it. I want to be more efficient with the box because by the time you you've put those boxes together and you've figured out how to make it where it doesn't move, man, I could have shipped two or three items. And so I also got small boxes because I've, I've got a lot of small items. So I got 642s, 644s. The biggest box I want to have is... Uh, 12, 10, 8, nothing. I don't want to sell anything that, that, that takes a box bigger than that yeah. for Amazon, just because if it's bigger than that, uh, it's, man, so there's money in printers and I've sold printers and stuff a lot, but you're talking 15, 20 minutes each minimum to ship them. And right. it's just, just a, a lot of time where, you know, efficiency, I challenge each one of you to work on efficiency, especially if you're like, say i don't have a wonderful jenna that does all my shipping so i do it all <laughs> and so i need to be as efficient as the last few days she's you know i've, I've you know been gone to asd uh, out and about and 
Uh, she has just been able to handle the shipping for me. And it's like I get home and the labels are created and everything's good. And it's yep. just one less burden that uh, that I have to, to deal with. And you guys know, the watch my channel. That's one of my least favorite things to do is to play with shipping. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of that, right? Um, but you said, you said efficiencies, right? So it's about, I think that's one thing that's lost on a lot of people. It's for many people, it's how can I do this reselling thing and not spend uh, as, you know, only spend money when I need to. And I think really that's kind of, if you're making this as a business, you really need to start thinking as a business when it comes to investing in things that are going to make you more efficient. Now you talked us into the whole paper tape thing. Uh, I got to tell you, you know, it's, it's a world of difference, not only from, you know, logistically when you're putting the boxes together, but it's your customer is going to see that instead of having gobs of tape, nasty tape, which I'm a, I despise tape, but you know, it's, a, it's one of those things is a love hate relationship with tape, but paper tape looks so much cleaner uh, on the right kind of box. Of course, you wouldn't use it on a white box usually, but um, I, ha on I have, and nobody's ever said anything. So I've got a few white boxes. Presentation wise, it looks professional. And I'm not even saying going out and get custom paper tape. Just the plain old brown the paper plain, tape. Plain old. Yeah, and it it's so efficient. You know, I can be in the garage, right? And I'm I'm actually, you know, I get my liquidation. I get large boxes of liquidation, and I got these boxes that sometimes these people return these items, and the item's good, but the box is torn to hell. It's like a five-year-old at Christmas. They just <laughs> rip into the box. Like they're so excited to get the item, they find it. Well, I didn't want it after all, and so now they're they're stuck sending this box with gobs of tape holding the, the panels on. And so, you know, what I'll do is I'm like, okay, let's maybe it's a little uh, OCD, but I'm I'm going with my my heat gun and I'm pulling these gobs of tape off of this damn thing, and I I'll measure the box. It's may, maybe you know 20 inches. I'll go measure like a 28 piece uh inch piece of paper tape and i'll just put it right on and smooth it out and you know it's good to go maybe i'll put one on the sides because if the box is really kind of banged up to give it a little bit more support but give it let it cure for about five minutes or whatever that thing is it like and yeah. it looks good it looks really good and you know you know people want to say well you know, you spent what five hundred dollars on that machine. That's probably the best five hundred dollars last year that I spent on my business. You know, and and then today I was telling you, uh, one of the things I was do I was doing is I was at my buddy's house. He, he's moving to Italy next week. Just found out it's going to be too expensive for him to ship the things that he wanted to ship, including his racks that he had in his garage. These are those big husky racks. I think they're like uh, seventy five or 76 inches long by like 24, 36 deep. And they're the really sturdy steel racks. And he had two of them. I broke them down, put them in my, uh, my SUV, brought them home. And I'm like, okay, what am I going to do with these? Now, I got to tell you, you can never have enough solid racks. And I thought, you know what? I have an area in my garage that I just – when I buy stuff, I bring it home and I just kind of stack it right in, in my garage, but it's not organized. And it's like my offloading area. It's like my to be listed kind of pile. And it's really not organized. I decided to pull all that out of the garage. I set up one of the racks already and I put everything in the racks. Oh my goodness. You wouldn't believe how, not only it, it's a cleaner feel, I don't feel like I am stepping on stuff, which I was doing the whole time. Uh, a lot of you guys watch my channel, know what area I'm talking about, where I keep all my stuff before I list it. Now they're neatly placed on this rack, and I feel like I've created some a, an efficiency within my business because I don't, I know where everything is. And the bottom rack, I got my big totes for all my shoes and stuff that I pick up, where before they were just stacked and I couldn't get to them. The, an item on the third tub i'd have to take the top two down creating a lot of work for this old guy and um that's just the first step so we talk about this time of year being the, a good time for spring cleaning um you know we're getting get right now we're about a, what a week or two away from official spring and 
I think this is the time I, I got to do at least once a year where I'm out in my garage, which is my main work area. And not only am I tidying it up, but identifying ways to change things to create efficiencies for yourself. And I've identified about five different things. And um, I you know, bought another table, bought some better lighting, um, got those racks now. And I know exactly how I'm going to set it up to where uh, after this weekend, it's going to be just, I'm going to save myself time because you know, I, I don't know if I'm the only one that feels this way, but if you are in a cluttered environment, if you're working with uh, such clutter and just stuff all over the place, it demotivates you. Yeah, you, you're kind of wondering, well, where do I start? I mean, what do I do? You're kind of just frozen in the headlights, just looking at your your pile going, okay, what do I, what do I list first? So I'll battle yeah. this on this side over here. This is the test, and there's a there's a picture area there. So I'm testing some of the eBay stuff. Yeah. And it's always a mess on this side. And I'm like, I bring this stuff home. RA, I need to, it's the eBay stuff that I need to take a picture of. Man, this area is a mess. So I bought one of the little 12 by 12 pictures that kind of boxes that folds up and folds down. So it's on the other side. It because the shipping area is always clean on the other side. So I'll just, just set it up right on top of the shipping area, take a few pictures, and then fold it back down. It's a, it's amazing, just a simple. But I'm going to challenge you a, a little bit farther. As okay. Most of us are coming in the yard sale season now. You'll be amazed what you can do at yard sales. Most people don't think about it. So the cabinets behind me on that wall over there, they were from somebody's kitchen. I paid $10 for them at a yard sale. I, put, I, I hung them on the wall, and then I got the little bar, I, the little – clips i got from from amazon bought the dow from from lowe's and now the 24 inch paper hangs between them so now the roll of paper you just you can just rip it and tear it off the the imac came from the auction it's 100 bucks uh it's my shipping computer uh last year at one of the one of my bluetooth scanners i picked up one at a yard sale for five bucks i found a bluetooth scanner at a yard sale for five um I, I found four uh, Dima printers last year, folks. You can you can in. I picked up three of those last year. All the they're corded, but they're still, you know, they're a couple bucks. What's great about this? I can have, um, like for instance, I can have my cursor on my screen, and I'm going to search for something, but I, I don't have the barcode with me. It's in the garage, so I'll just highlight the search, and then I'll go into the garage scan the barcode and it's on my screen already and many and many times it's actually already searching for the item um uh, you know i can go in the garage and do that and i'm only the other wall it's only on the other side of the wall but um uh, it's still pretty amazing that i don't have to lug uh boxes and stuff in here just so i can scan the unit you know what i mean i can just do it out there where it's not i picked up this camera uh, for two dollars at a yard sale, <laughs> this chair came from a yard sale. This desk came from the auction, folks. It, it is out there at low cost. Yeah. This computer, the computer I'm using is the uh, twelve dollar computer <laughs> from a yard sale. I'm telling you, it, brand it, forty eight by twenty four inch desk. It has a nice wood top. Um, it's the kind where it's a standing desk or you can have a sitting. You can you can have a little button that raises it or lowers it. Uh, you plug it in. And those are like two to three hundred dollar desks. I picked up for 50 bucks. Um, there's deals out there, guys. You just got to look for them and know where to look, you know. Um, but speaking about this real quick while it's on my mind, uh, technology and things. Um, maybe this incorporates a, a segment we were going to do, which we will do. But most of the comments that we received on the last video was, you know, hey, we like the podcast, but we just can't hear Scott. So, you know, maybe he needs to fix his, his volume. And so we were brainstorming. We found out we have the same microphone. We have the Blue Yeti. And uh, his microphone, he even had it on the road with him last week. So we're trying to figure out, well, why is it that the sound is not good? And we found that he had the wrong setting on the back. And you guys notice now, his sound is a lot better. At least I hope it is for you guys. It's, it's here. Uh, 
I don't know how it got on that setting because I've got the other one in, inside and it's set correctly. Yeah. It's, so it's not only having the tools to create efficiency, it's having, it's using them properly. And <laughs> nobody noticed on my Wednesday morning show either. What the heck? Well, you know what? I, I just think that no one really, we just accepted that that's kind of what it was. I mean, you, we could still hear you, but I, I, from when you, before you changed it, before we went on the show, we were talking and we told, I told you about this and you made the change. It was like night and day difference between the, the, the sound quality that you had and what, so, you know, you'll play this thing back and go and listen to it. Um, no, I your, can't stand in my voice. So I won't listen to it. Who does? I mean, look, I don't like my voice either. Jen will be watching my videos and I'm like, you're watching that idiot again. I'm like, come on. I just can't stand my voice. So I'm like one of the ones where I will make a video. I'll edit the video. And I guess maybe I've just, okay, enough is enough. I've seen the video too many times. Uh, I'm never going to watch it again. You know, I don't know if you do, if you do that as well. You launch that's it, the, you launch your own video. That's the worst because you got to go edit it. So folks, if you don't edit videos, you don't understand. I say, um, you don't know how much you say um and ah uh, and you have pet words until you listen to yourself and, go, and start trying to cut some of those out. It's uh. It's amazing. I think the reason why I do it so much is because I'm trying to kill the dead air, right? I don't want there to be a lot of just dead air where I'm trying to get to the next thought. And maybe that means I just need to slow down. Slow because down. a normal more. conversation, it doesn't come up, but it's only when you're trying to prolong or carry on a thought and trying to trying to get to, I guess we're concentrating too much on getting to the next thought instead of. Yeah. I mean, especially a show like this, we're trying to fill the full hour and it's like, okay, what do, what do I say? Um, and you're constantly thinking of what to say. And I guess maybe you're buying time. I don't know. So for those of you guys who actually gave us your feedback, thank you for doing that. Yeah. We value that. that you know, if it wasn't for you guys, we would have thought everything was fine. And, you know, th this episode would have sounded like the last one. So going forward, you're going to get better quality. And it's the feedback, you know, not only just the, the, the sound quality, but, you know, if there's anything that you guys want us to talk about, or is there's anything that, you know, maybe we need to hit on that we haven't thought about hitting on, you know, put that in the comments. We, we read all the comments and, uh, you know, we, we do value your your feedback so we can improve the show. No, absolutely, 100%. Um, as much we want to improve, as much as we just talked about improving your business and your efficiency, we also want to do the same thing for, for this podcast because we, we want to create value. And that's the reason why we both make videos. We both have channels is we, we enjoy helping people. And, you know, it's, it's rare that you get to talk so much just about reselling um i'm blessed to have friends that are around me that i, I talk to you know i've got you know harlan my, one of my better friends harlan lives here and resells but but even then you, you gotta have you gotta have some kind of hobby you can't talk re even with your good friends you can't talk reselling all the time no i mean i was out playing golf this morning yeah i made time for golf a friend of mine's leaving uh, my golf buddy who's gonna be gone he's gonna be in italy next week it was our last round of golf. We had one day to play, and we chose a day where it was 30 to 40 mile an hour winds. The worst ever. 45 <laughs> degrees, and we had snow that was blowing sideways in Vegas. Cannot believe it. And it was cold as hell. So It was it was 82 here today. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> nice. I mean, it blew all day, just the wind and everything. So, you know, we get all the different weather here in Vegas. It's, it's crazy, but... Uh, you had, let's get on to, to what you were telling me before we started the show. Uh, and that was, you had a situation with a return on, was it eBay, right? So, you know, they say the customer's always right. Well, I no. kind of beg to differ. I, so I, I get a notification for a return. I'm like on eBay and I'm like, this is crazy. And it was, a, it was for a remote. So I have, so if you don't know, I used to buy a bunch of remotes. I'll still buy my yard sales. If they're a quarter, I'll just pick them up. If we list them for whatever, you know, you make a few dollars. You know, my, my son will list them. But the remote, but our procedure is he'll test them before he lists them. I'll test them before I ship them. So every one of them gets tested twice. 
So I knew this thing worked. So I started looking through the details and the guys, you know, they make you put a picture. So he put a picture of the VCR controls it's, and it's a VCR remote. And his complaint was it would not operate his TV. <laughs> I'm like, so dude, wanted a universal remote. You bought a VCR remote to operate a TV. I don't think that's, I don't think that's my fault. <laughs> and, and you know, they always put, you know, sent, sent wrong item. I, right. I didn't send the wrong item. Uh, you ordered the wrong item, buddy. I sent you exactly what you ordered. But, well, they, uh, yeah, you're on. You're off the hook. You're off, they're off the hook for the return label. Well, I've got free return, so it's gonna it's gonna come back free anyway. But mm -hmm. yeah, but I, I might charge them a few few percentages because of. Uh, there's got to be an ignorant tax, right? Should we should we have we should have an ignorant tax? Yeah, well, a lot of people would claim something to get out of that one. Yeah, you know, returns for me. I had a, a guy that had sent me a message, and it was a some some type of a bed liner for a, an older truck. It had like the yellow uh, liner, uh, like a gold color. Everything was in new condition. Each piece was wrapped individually. This is like an open box thing I, I picked up uh, for a couple bucks, sold it for like 80 plus shipping. And he wanted to complain, you know, like, oh, this, but he sent me a message saying, oh, uh, uh, received this, was beat up, um, not good for the money plus $50 shipping. So he's already complaining about the shipping that he paid. And I said, well, couldn't have been beat up. I said, th th you see the photo here that I, this is the photo that I actually took of the whole set. Everything was fine. He's like, well, it must have happened during shipping. And so I'm like, well, I said, we could, we could take a return if you want. I said, but, you know, as far as shipping, this thing should not have been beat up at all because each piece was individually wrapped inside the box. Um, and he never got back to me. I was, I, I was waiting for this person to leave me a negative. I just knew a negative was coming. It never did, thankfully, at least not yet, knock on particle board here. But, um. You know, it's like some of these people with their attempts to shake you down and it's almost a little pathetic, but you know where it's going. And the moment they start complaining about the price, then number one, you can't as a I guess buyers can do whatever they want. But in eBay's eyes, um, buyers aren't supposed to complain about the terms of the sale and the amount that they paid is clearly there. So they can't complain about the terms of the sale. And of course, the moment I mentioned to return the item, of course, oh no, you know, I bet maybe one piece maybe had a nick in it or maybe a paint chip somewhere and he probably wanted to portray it as the whole set. Mind you, he had no photos to show me and uh, it's almost like the one, the video I came out with uh, uh, earlier in the week where on my channel where I was talking about the freight forward buyer who got this item um, painted this horrible picture of the item. And, you know, of course they didn't have pictures to show me, but they described just horrible things about it. How the, um, it's like a little, it's a, it's a solar sensor for your driveway. Someone pulls in your driveway, you know, it, con it notifies the main box, which notifies something, right? It's not a main brand. It's like a third party off brand. And this was received by me from where I go buy my stuff. We inspect everything, make sure everything's in great condition. If there's any issues, we send it back. And uh, this one, power, it had power on test. And they want to say that the item had in, uh, insect infestation, uh, all this stuff in there. And, you know, he wanted, I said, well, you know, I was surprised by it. Um, I found out that, you know, this was through a freight forwarder. He said uh, he's in Kenya. You know, when I asked, I told him to send it back. We'll, we'll gladly take the return. Well, you know, it'll cost me too much in, in customs to send it back because I'm in another country. And then, you know, the uh, wheel started spinning in my head, uh, found that they went through some freight forwarder in Texas. And, uh, you know, it's like, well, that's not my that's not my situation. And I don't want to say it's not my problem because that just sounds bad. But it's not my situation. I shipped it to, a, to an address I was given in the United States. Um, you know, my offer still stands. Because eBay gives you a good solid 30, 35 days. He'll never yeah. get it the same time. Yeah, but you know what? Um, it, the offer still stands if it's that bad. He's like, well, I could probably replace the two units. And so um, maybe you can give me um, a partial refund. 
So it's like, okay, I, now I know exactly where this is going. Then um, I told him, just send it back. You know, I, I, I'll i give you the time. You know, he was going to give you like 35 days to send it back to the freight forward and have him send it back. And uh, he refused and uh, said, uh, came back and said, you know, I, I'm thinking that I'm going to have to leave a one-star review. Now, another red flag went off because if you're coming at me saying you're going to leave a one-star review and you want the partial refund, okay, if you read the two messages, it's either do this or I'm going to leave a one-star review. Told him, look, that's feedback extortion. You cannot do it. I gave him a copy of the, I copied and pasted the policy, eBay's policy, and he went away. So no feedback. Of course, why wouldn't he leave a negative feedback if I sent him such a bad thing? There's nothing wrong with this item. Uh, he was just trying to uh, push the seller, me, around. And I think that's, I read so many people who post in Facebook forums. Yeah, I like to read and help people that are sellers. And a lot of times you'll see in some of these Facebook, eBay forums uh, that, hey, I got this buyer. They, you know, wanting a partial refund. I sent them a red. They said they want a green, but the listing said red. And what do I do? And the problem, I think, is, and that's what the message was in my video, is that there's too many people who will allow a buyer to shake them down. And you're telling that buyer, you're teaching that buyer that it's okay. And this is going to work and to keep doing it. Because if we all collectively held our ground and said, use the return policy, um, I think enough buyers keep getting shot down, they're gonna stop doing it. Now, I'm not gonna say that's gonna fix it all. You're still gonna have people that are gonna try to get the partial refund, but I know I'm not the only one out there that's getting these clowns. What about you? I'm sure you get them I right. I don't think you ever stop them, but the, it's, it's, you know, my, my, my two thoughts on it are stand, stand on the rules, you know, always, you know, what, what eBay says or whatever platform you're, you're operating with, you know, whatever their policies are, reiterate the policies to them, but also be careful that, that you don't treat a, someone who has a legitimate concern. And, but there, once you've been doing this for a little while, you get a feel who's legitimate, who's not. Um, yeah. I've had, I've had thing I've had customers where I, I know I messed up, you know, I, maybe I sent them the wrong big girl panties or whatever it is. Uh, you know, I've got, I've got four different, four different ones and I have sent the wrong one before. I, I even have, so a good story is one of them is in the wrong package and I sent her, she ordered six and I sent five of the ones in the wrong package. And, and she sent me a message back saying, I got one right and five wrong. And I'm like, ma'am, I am so sorry. I did not mean to send you those, but they are, they are mislabeled by the manufacturer. If you'll open one of the other ones, you'll see that they're all, all six are identical. And I get a message back saying, I never would have known that. Thank you so much for letting me know. Uh, these are just great. So, you know, she was concerned that she, I sent her the wrong ones. And it looked like I did, but she never would have known because she's like, I never would have thought to open that. And so you can help a customer out. You can be, it, it doesn't hurt to be kind, folks. I, I'm telling you, I went to 26, 27 stores a day. Um, you know, I went in some areas that, you know, I might have been the only person of my race in some of these stores. And you know what kind of problems I had? I had none. I treated people kindly. Uh, it, people were, were very friendly, very nice. Uh, you, I'm a firm believer you get you get you get what you give. And so you'll you'll get a crazy one every now and then. The, the worst thing you can do is to be kind and 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 give them the rules back and then let them make the decision how they want to go. It's. Yeah, I think that's the, the biggest skill that most people that resell um, really need to learn. And I'm not I'm not going to dis disparage people for not knowing because maybe they come from a different background than what I come from, uh, which was heavily focused on um, customer service. But it is a skill that I think we should all want to learn when we're dealing with customers, because uh, a lot of times these customers, they'll they'll they're the first ones to message you. And they'll come at you on the wrong foot, already pissed off, probably still mad about the last transaction that went sideways. They're, they're now expecting because maybe they got something that in their eyes was wrong or chipped or not the right color or whatever. And now they're pissed off at you, right? Now, forget the fact that they may have made the mistake and didn't read the listing, right? They're pissed off at you because it's easier for them to be mad at you 
than themselves. And I think when you receive these uh, customers, you got first, your first step is probably a, it should be a de-escalation. So by doing that, hey, thank you for reaching out to me. I'm sorry that you're dealing with this. Um, you know, we do offer a 30 day return policy. You're welcome to return it, that type of thing. You can even go as far as saying if they're like talking about, well, you know, this is chip and maybe you put chipped in the listing. Um, you know, sorry uh, that you're dealing with this. You know, uh, did you realize that in the description I did mention that? However, you're welcome to return it because you, you know, and I know there's a lot of people out there that have no returns, but you, I mean, you got to think of it from a buyer standpoint. If you're the buyer, would would you want to be doing business when there's no returns? But we've talked about that many times uh, in the past on other uh, podcasts and on my channel. But that aside, de-escalation is going to be the best thing that you can do. You don't have to say it's my fault. You can soften the situation, have them open a return, and just leave it there. And there's a thing that uh, I've learned uh, in customer service. It's called last. Listen, ask, solve, think. Okay. So now that's used primarily when you are talking to someone on the phone back and forth. But those skills can still be applied when you're dealing with messages with the buyer. So their first message, take time to analyze or to understand what they are complaining about. There's a lot of people have broken English, maybe uh, run on sentence queens out there or kings and you're just reading this one big paragraph of run on sentences and you can't make uh, your first glance or it's too much information you're not even going to bother reading that stuff that's your mentality it shouldn't be you should try to understand what the buyer is dealing with why they're upset okay ask any follow-up questions hey hey um you know i i see that you're upset about this you know i'm sorry that let, let's help me understand what the problem is why is it that you're upset about this? Okay. And then they'll come back, solve. So they'll explain whatever they're saying. Right. So now, okay. Ah, okay. Have you considered um, plugging in the unit or, or, you know what I'm saying? Right. It, whatever. Whatever you call tech support in the United States. The first thing is, did you plug it in? But aside from a silly response like that, if you have an understanding of what could be the problem, maybe they're misusing the item, um, try to solve their problem. Um, offer them, hey, go on. Uh, there should be a manual for this item on Google. Free download. Doesn't shouldn't cost you anything. Just search for the item and then the word manual, and that should be able to help you. You're trying to find creative ways to solve their problem, and, and then if that doesn't work, you know, you, you, your other solution is you can offer a return. And then of course, thank them for their patience. You know, again, you did nothing wrong in many of these cases, but the buyer it helps soften the blow to them and it's going to separate this experience from their last bad experiences online. And it will prevent many things to prevent a return, to prevent negative feedback because of the lack of communication or the lack of uh, a, a courteous communication. And so these are things that people should develop and it's really common sense kind of stuff. How do you want to be treated as a buyer? Put yourself in those shoes and react to those messages accordingly. And I promise you, um, it's going to not only lessen the number of problems that you end up facing after the sale, but your enjoyment of dealing with customers. A lot of people are afraid of dealing with customers. They shy away from it. And that's part of the business of reselling. They don't want to deal with. But if you learn these techniques, it'll go a long way. Yeah, the only the only difference uh, to all of my restaurant training was we use the same an acronym last, but it was the A was apologize. You know, I apologize for the situation. You know, hey, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm so, I'm sorry, you're I'm sorry this is happening. Especially, you know what? Uh, it you happens know what? a lot with shipping. You know, right. I'm not actually, I was wrong. I think you are right. I said ask. It should be apologize. Listen, apologize. Because, because the if you diffu that's a big diffuser, folks. If you understand. Because I get you get a lot of questions, especially on Amazon, about you know an item being lost. You get them on eBay too. You know it was says delivered. You know so it's you didn't do anything wrong. You're not apologizing for anything you did. It's it's hey, I'm sorry this has happened. Uh, let me see what we can do about it. You know here's you know most people don't know that the delivery scan gives them a GPS location, so mm -hmm. it gives you an opportunity to educate a customer. But you know that when you when you start diffusing the situation. Uh, it 
it's not always going to go in your favor, but you know, the angry customer, you know, if, if it's a scammer and sometimes that happens, they, they go away. And that's the nice part about it. If, if you follow these steps, you know, you know, and, and you stand on, you stand on the rules and you're nice and you're kind and you're, and you don't escalate to anger. Uh, it gets real easy for a customer service person to look back at all the, all the, communications and go wow okay. they fall they they side with you very very quickly mm -hmm. yeah and and i think these these scammers they are they're looking for someone prepared to handle that situation and um rather than ah oh, you know what i just don't want to bother with it i'll give them ten dollars and they'll go away well if you do that enough over a year that adds up you do that 20 right. times a year you just gave out two hundred dollars um now like you said if you made a mistake you should be the first one to to own it, apologize for it. That will soften the the blow of whatever that customer is dealing with. Remember, they are disappointed. They just bought an item, and it's not going to work out for them in in many cases. Maybe they can make it work, right? Um, but for me, as a buyer, um, I'm disappointed that I'm going to have to send this thing back. Now, as a seller, you can then offer look. Um, if you could still make this thing work for you, maybe it's missing screws. Maybe I can send you five bucks, 10 bucks, uh, to help you replace those screws. If you want to go to your local convenience, uh, the, the hardware store and pick that up and make this work. Uh, if that's not going to work for you, then, um, I'll gladly take, uh, take a return on this kind of thing. Right. And I, the one thing that has always worked for me when, and I'm dealing with, this is years of dealing with customers on the phone, right? So you're trying to uh, deal with a person who's already probably really hot, mad, right? About this, whatever they're going through. It's better to give someone options than to say, this is all I can do. Like, okay, return is all I can do. If you've messed up, you should try to provide an option. If you can remedy the situation with a partial refund that makes sense, then offer that. If, um, the return is the other option. So I can offer you this. If that's not going to work, please return the item. So now they feel like they have a decision or a some control in the matter rather than feeling like you're telling them, well, this is all I can do, take it or leave it. That doesn't sit well with a lot of people. And um, for me, if a buyer comes to me without any kind of proof and they're already asking for money, it's red flags. And I want to be as a seller, the person offering that because I've, I've recognized where I've made a mistake and I'm willing to offer something that's fair to the buyer to help resolve the problem, avoid a negative, avoid a return. And many times that works, but thankfully, you know, I'm making mistakes all the time, but my mistakes are fewer and far between uh, as they were say five years ago, because you're, you're constantly learning in this business. And the, the one thing you can buy, you can one a positive result. You can build, confidence with your future buyers people that look at your feedback because i like seeing feedback where it, you know it because i've got a couple of them where i've messed up and the and the customer will leave you feedback saying and seller work with me outstanding result absolutely recommend this seller you'll you'll get great feedback if, if you solve somebody's problem in, in this manner uh you will you will get you know, rarely negative and it and you you will get positive feedback you know, somebody standing up for you, which is, uh, which you think should be normal in, in this business because everybody would want these kind of outcomes, but it's, you know, separate yourself, take care of your customer. You'll be amazed at the results. Well, we're getting that uh, time. We're about an, uh, almost an hour in. That's kind of where we want to keep the podcast. So we're not, you know, talking about things that aren't helpful or just meaningless. Uh, there's a lot of content out like that, and we don't want to be that podcast. So uh, the whole idea is to, to have a good, solid hour of discussion for you guys. And now it's your job to listen to the video, watch the video, put the comments down below, contribute to the conversation, and we will uh, take the feedback that we think is probably the most prevalent, and we'll, we'll put it into discussion on next on the next show. So Scott, why don't you, uh, why don't you close out the show and uh, take us away? All right. Well, thanks for joining us on episode three. Uh, I'm glad you could hear me this week. <laughs> uh, it, 
you can find us both on our channels. Uh, we both do live shows. I'm I'm Wednesday at 8 a.m. Central. And John, you can find John Mon Monday and Friday at 5 p.m. Central. I don't know his time, so I'm going to give you my time. And I do Friday I do Friday nights after his show. <laughs> both Friday nights. So uh, if, you, if you need more live show, if you need your personal questions answered, put them in our chats. Uh, we'd love to help you out if you've got a problem. Uh, so thanks well, for joining us. No personal questions, just business questions. <laughs> well, I mean, per your personal business question. We've got wives that'll help you with personal. We're we're probably not the greatest of that. No, no. But uh, <laughs> you know, thank you for being a part of this uh, uh, show, everybody. And uh, we're we're so excited to do this. Uh, this is our third episode, and we're looking to do many more, many more. So with that, we'll see you guys next week, and have a, a great rest of your week. Take care, everyone.